Are you using downsells the right way in your funnels? As someone who's built hundreds of funnels for clients all over the world, I'm about to show you the right way to use downsells and how you can use downsells more effectively in your funnels. Make sure you subscribe. New videos like this come out every single week. A big mistake I see lots of people making is simply not using downsells at all. Most people get so wrapped up in focusing on the core offers and the upsells that their only contingency plan when somebody doesn't buy is to rely on the follow-up sequence and retargeting. Now, I agree, that's probably something you should focus on, but you also need to account for the people who either aren't ready for that offer or for the people who don't think it's the right offer for them. Now, a downsell doesn't always have to be something that's offered in a funnel immediately after somebody chooses not to buy. Sometimes your focus will be really heavy on the main offer, like after a webinar, for example, and you'll introduce the downsell a couple of days later when the follow-up sequence doesn't convert them. What I want you to remember is that when people say no, they're really saying one of three things. They're saying not right now, which could be a timing thing or a money thing. They might be saying, I need more information. This is when somebody needs more time being nurtured with content instead of blasted with more offers, okay? And it could also mean that they just don't feel like the offer is right for them. When your follow-up sequences don't convert, a downsell is a great way to take a small step back and re-engage the customer. When it comes to a downsell in a more traditional sense, meaning in the flow of a funnel, there are a couple of different ways you can go about it. A big mistake people make is thinking about the downsell as kind of a Hail Mary, a last ditch effort to squeeze some money out of that person. This is without a doubt, 100% the wrong way to think about a downsell. I see it all the time. People come up with some random, often worthless offer that they threw together overnight as a downsell that has absolutely no correlation to the initial offer at all. It makes me cringe when I go through a funnel like this. I say it all the time. Start with the end in mind. Every single lead magnet, tripwire, upsell, downsell, everything you offer, should help move them closer and closer towards the exact same goal. It's gotta move them from where they are now to where they want to be. If you're selling a physical product, it might be an accessory to the product that you've already sold them. That might be a downsell. If you're selling an online course, a great downsell could be just one of the modules that you've pulled out of the course. This gives them a taste of what the course is like, gives them a quick win that moves them closer to their goal, and it allows you to test multiple different downsells using different modules. You might also offer your course for a lower price, only without the bonuses. As much as I hate the idea of doing this because all you're really doing is devaluing your course, it kind of goes against the whole sales philosophy, and it feels a little bit gross at the same time, it's really effective. I can't deny that. It converts really, really well. Just be prepared that with your next offer, people are likely going to search for the downsell offer. They're going to say no just to see if they can get that downsell offer for less. So it could really jeopardize future conversions on new products or offers. One way to get around that, make sure your bonuses are actually really good. Don't just throw in a bunch of random things like a, a Facebook group. Like, great, every online course has a Facebook group. What a bonus. Actual, legitimate, high value bonuses. That's a great way to make sure that people aren't gonna do that because they actually want the bonuses. Now, you should be treating your downsells as a way to continue a transactional relationship with the customer while still helping them solve their problems and ultimately leading them closer towards their main goal, right? In the same way a lead magnet and a tripwire offer provides smaller quick wins, your downsell has to do the same. In some cases, a tripwire offer might double perfectly as a downsell. That is a tripwire that obviously hasn't been offered previously in the exact same funnel, right? Another way I like to use downsells is more of a lateral or a cross sell. This would be where you switch gears a little and offer them something that will still help them reach their goals and solve their problem, only in a little bit of a different way. So a great example of this would be Digital Marketer. They offer a number of different courses on everything to do with marketing from copywriting, paid traffic, content, social media, all kinds of different courses, right? Well, what if somebody purchased a product that could be categorized as more than one of those? Let's say they have a funnel designed to sell their top copywriting course, and the customer purchased a swipe file of Digital Marketer's top performing ads. You might think that if they bought that, they could be interested in learning how to write their own ads effectively by taking a copywriting course. 
but they might have wanted examples that they could model for their own paid ads, which in that case, the top paid traffic course might be a better fit. So when they say no to the copywriting course, you might take a funnel lateral, is what I like to call them, and offer them a paid traffic course as a downsell or a cross sell, even though the price might be the same. This can really be effective when your business caters to people in multiple different niches that are all related to the same end goal. There's bound to be a little bit of overlap with the customers, right? So your downsell doesn't always have to be a lesser price product. It's a big myth that you'll hear. In fact, you shouldn't only be focusing solely on the price as a downsell. Sure, a downsell could mean a lower financial commitment, but it could also mean a lesser time commitment or you know something like that. I like to think of them as taking a step back in the customer journey or using the downsell as a bit of a holding pattern for your customer until they're ready for that next step. So have a little bit of fun, play around with them a little and make sure you're always testing different downsells. If I leave you with just one thing today, it's that your downsell has to be relevant to the customer journey not just a throwaway offer that you have laying around. So that's it guys. Let me know what your favorite downsells are in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. You can also join the Funnels and Marketing Strategy Facebook group to get all kinds of free resources and funnel templates that are gonna help you grow your business. If you want some help with your next funnel or optimizing one of the funnels you already have, feel free to book a call with me over at markhaverstock.com. As always guys, links are in the description. I'll see you in the next one.